Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, I bless God for this opportunity. And we began to share with you yesterday about entering God's rest. And I know that this message is so vital. That's why I told you we're going to start this series. And I'm going to take you through the foundation of this understanding. So you will be well grounded when it comes to entering God's rest. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that delivery? Remember what I shared with you about releasing your faith yesterday? Come on, let's do it now. Praise God. Say this, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, yesterday, I remember where I stopped yesterday. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 3. And I was explaining to you that when God, in, in that verse, she says, Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work, which, now this was the point, which God had created and made. And I was telling you, why did he use God the second time in that place? It wasn't an, it wasn't a, a, a mistake. It was deliberate. He's trying to show you that there, it's, 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 ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. He was trying to distinguish, because you're going to see this in the next verse, right? So, I was telling you yesterday, you know, when you go to chapter 1, you see everything there says, God, 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 and God said, and God said, and God said, and God said. Then you come to um, chapter 2, and that tells you God rested. Now, actually, I mean, left for me chapter 4 of uh, chapter 2 and verse 4, or verse 4 of chapter 2, it's supposed to be verse 1 of chapter 2. So everything in verse 1 and chapter, verse 1 and verse 3 is supposed to be under chapter 1. And as it left for me, praise God, because chap, verse 4 of chapter 2 is the introduction of a new work. Now let me show you something there. Look at verse 4. It said, this is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Hold on now. There is an introduction here that you need to see. And what is that? This is the first time he is introducing another word to God. It says, the Lord God. Throughout chapter 1, he didn't mention the Lord God. And then suddenly, in the middle of this chapter, he introduced the Lord God. Now, what's that telling you? The one who created in six days is different from the one who began to create now. Now, that's why he started the journey again. Remember, I told you yesterday, the word thus in verse 1. Now, that's chapter 2, verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. Now, it means this is how the heavens and the earth and the host of them were finished. So it says, thus the heavens and the earth. And I told you that that means this is how. How did he do it? He's telling you how God created and all God did for those six days was to speak. That's all God was doing. I told you yesterday, he nothing moved when he was doing all that. So now when he comes in and said, this is the history of... Old King James used the word generations. That's, that's more appropriate, actually. This is the generations. Now, what does that mean? This is telling you it took a while. It's not just something that sprang up, you know, you know, uh, miraculously like that. Everything that grew on the earth grew naturally. They, they had their natural process of growth. The trees, everything started from a seed, and it took the normal time for them to grow. And that's why he used the word here, generations. In other words, this is, this is the real process. Now, we're using that statement, the generations or history. He now introduced the word Lord God. Now, who's the Lord God? He's the Holy Spirit. Take note of that. It is the Holy Spirit. 
So now you find here that God finished creating everything. How did he create? By speaking. And when he was done creating everything, he rested. He rested because he finished. He rested because he handed off. He rested because he was done, not going back to work. So it wasn't a rest to continue later. It was a rest to signify, I am done. That's why the Bible says he sanctified that day. You see that now? He sanctified that day. That's in verse 3, chapter 2. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. So take note of this now. God created the heavens and the earth by speaking. And when he was done creating, what did he do? He rested. He handed off. Handing off, not because, now, now, like I told you yesterday, no pain moved, darkness everywhere was still dark, nothing changed, but he was confident enough to rest. Why? Because that resting meant he was handing over to the Holy Spirit. It was now the job of the Holy Spirit to begin to walk the details of everything God had created by speaking. And I tell you this, till this day, there are things God spoke in six days that have not manifested yet. Why has it not manifested yet? Because the season for it hasn't come. Precept is being upon precept, line being upon line. Now that's how the, the Holy Spirit is doing his work. The Holy Spirit is not doing anything new. He's only doing what God has said in his creation. Are you following me? Now, one good example I always give is the book of life. The book of Revelation tells us that the book was written before the foundation of the world. See that? Now, what does it mean the book was written before the foundation of the world? The book of life was actually written on the sixth day of God's creation. Now, that was the day God created man. So on that day, God did not just create Adam. God, creates every, God created every human being that will ever exist on this earth. Now, as children are being born into this earth, now God brings forth children according to their timing and when their name was written. Now, when I mean when their name was written, I'm not saying this one was. No, of course, God had, God had this whole thing planned out. And hey, there are names God spoke on that sixth day. He spoke all our names. He did, praise God. He spoke all our names. Now, all the names that God spoke, they have not been born yet on the earth. So that's an indication that things God spoke on that day, of the six days of creation, they are not yet manifest yet. See that? Now, Everybody has its timing, that's number one. Number two, every season, there are things that will be introduced on the earth at different seasons. And those things will be done by angels and men. Now, that's another day's talk. But what I'm trying to show you here is God rested. He rested. He didn't, he didn't say, oh, I must wait and see that everything I have said comes to pass. No, he trusted his words. Remember what I talked to you, I spoke to you about releasing your faith. He trusted that every word he has said will surely come to pass. Why? Because the one he rested for is capable of bringing to pass everything that he has said. Are you following me now? Now, this was exactly what God did when he rested. And when we talk about God's rest, this is what we're talking about. It means handing off and letting the one who knows how begin to do his work. See that? So God finished and rested never to come work again. And the Holy Spirit began from that point. Now when you look, look at the scriptures, you'll notice that from then on, he began to use the Lord God, 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 the Lord God. Yeah, that, that's what he began to use. That's to tell you that from that point, 
this is the one that has been in charge till this day. Now, the interesting thing here is this, and I want you to follow me. After God finished, now you know the story. Let's not go into all those details, but as we go on, I'll pick on some of those things. Jesus came. And the ministry of Jesus spanned for the three and a half years. Three and a half years ministry from the baptism until the time he went to the cross. Now, when Jesus finished his work, he hung on that cross and he made a statement. He said, it is finished. Now, what did he mean it is finished? He watched everything hanging on that cross. He thought of every assignment God gave him. And let me tell you the truth. You know, people just thought Jesus came to die for our sins. That's how people just conclude. And we forget one important thing Jesus came to do. He himself said, I am come that they might have life. So Jesus came to inject life into us. Now, how did he inject that life into us? By his words. I, I need you to catch this. I need you to catch this. Jesus introduced life to us by his words. So the real ministry of Jesus was the words he spoke. So for three and a half years, he was speaking. And when he was done speaking, he went to that cross. And hanging on that cross, you know what Jesus was thinking about? Have I said everything the Father has commanded me to say? And he was convinced there was nothing more to say. So he stood there and says, it is finished. And guess what happened? He rested because when he rose from the dead the bible says the father told him to sit down at his own right hand until he makes his enemy his footstool meaning jesus handed off now guess who he handed off to uh-huh you got, guess right the holy spirit now can you see something here the father who is the one that's referred to as god finished his work by speaking Handed over to the Holy Spirit. The Holy, uh, hand, handed over to the Holy Spirit, yes. Jesus, who was the one that became flesh, finished his work. And guess one funny thing about Jesus. Oh, can you handle this? Guess what? Jesus never got one person saved. He came as a savior, but he never saved one person. Nobody got born again under Jesus' ministry. Nobody. Nobody. Yet, he gave the template for salvation. He did everything that would bring us into salvation. But not one soul got saved. Yet, he rested. <laughs> so can you imagine that? Not one soul got saved. But then, he rested. The same thing the father did. No pain, no pain moved, but he rested. Now see the amazing thing. See everything you see in the world today. The physical things began after he rested. And Jesus finished his work and rested. Haven't rested. Then look at all the works of the Spirit of God today. They are all in line with what Jesus said. You remember what Jesus said about the Holy Ghost? He will not even speak of himself. He will take of mine and he will reveal. So Jesus was saying, the Holy Spirit is not doing any work. You know what I mean by doing any? He's not initiating any work. He is taking from what I have finished. And that's exactly what he's going to be doing. Are you seeing that? The same thing he did with the Father. The Holy Spirit is not creating anything special by himself. He is only bringing into manifestation the things the Father said in six days when he was created. So also in our lives, the Holy Spirit is not bringing anything fresh. He's not bringing anything new. That's why we tell people, 
if you don't understand the teachings of Jesus, you can never enjoy the sweetness of the Holy Spirit. You can never enjoy the real manifestation of the Holy Spirit because you don't even understand what he is building in your life. So when we speak on God's rest, I, 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 I hope you're beginning to get an idea of what we are talking about. Because, hey, the Father spoke and rested. Jesus spoke and rested. Hey, it is now left for you to enter into your rest. Praise God. Hey, it is now left for you. It is now left for us to enter into his rest. How are we going to enter into his rest? Brothers and sisters, it's not different from how the father entered into his rest. It's not different from how Jesus entered into his rest. They have shown us the example and we ought to follow that example. And, and I told you something, it is the Father, it is, it, is, it is God that will take you by the hand and lead you into that rest. It's not a rest you can enter by yourself. There is no way you can enter this rest by yourself unless he takes you in. See that now? Now that's why you don't just wake up and say, I want to enter into a rest. This is what I want to do. No, sir. You've got to follow and follow and follow. And that's the things we're going to be talking about. Praise God. Oh, my time is up today. Listen, ah, we're going to have an interesting time. I'm telling you the truth. But more especially, I'm trusting the Lord to truly usher you into his rest. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you're doing in our lives in these days. Lord, we submit to you completely that you will fulfill every word and everything you have ordained for our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.